Hi, I'm Jason Myers, a technical writer at Influx Data. And I'm Scott Anderson, a tech lead on the product team at Influx Data. We're talking about Flux functions today. So Scott, I know Flux is a functional programming language. Can you tell me what's the difference between a functional programming language and an actual function? Sure. So when you talk about a functional programming language, you're really talking about an approach to programming, where you compose complex scripts or programs using smaller focused functions. A function itself is really just an operation that takes parameters as input and returns output based on those parameters. So here on the board, we see the flux syntax for functions or for divining a function. We have an add function that has an x and y parameter and then the operation that adds those two parameters together and okay. returns the sum of those values. We also have a toInt function that has a single parameter with a default value. Whenever you define a function with a default value, when, if you call that function, you don't necessarily have to specify that parameter with a default value. In this case, the default value is the pipe receive operator. This is important because it represents any data that is pipe forwarded into this function using the pipe forward operator. So if we look at this example query down here, this is our pipe forward operator, and it takes output from the previous function, so order matters here, okay. and it forwards that output into the next function as input, and it's received by the pipe receive operator. Okay. So tables is going to represent anything that is pipe forwarded into the toInt function. Tables then gets pipe forwarded into map, which is where the type conversion happens for all the values and converts them to integers. Okay, so whereas here we have two specific parameters that this function is expecting, here we, there is dynamic, it's, we're expecting from this table and then it says once we've got those, let's do something useful with them. Exactly. Okay, so what functions are available in Flux? So there are currently between four and 500 functions in the Flux standard library. I'd love to list them all, but I, I don't think that would be really valuable for anyone's time. Wouldn't be engaging video? No, I don't think so. Um, Probably the best place to find out what functions exist is either in the Flux documentation or even the Flux source code where all the functions are defined and documented. There's also some abbreviated documentation inside of the InfluxDB OSS and InfluxDB cloud user interface. Okay, so there are clearly a lot of functions out there already. Uh, so you have some written on the board here. Can you walk us through, show us how they work? Sure. So this is a really common use case of querying data from InfluxDB. Here we have a chain of functions designed to perform a specific task. We have the from function that queries data from an InfluxDB bucket. The output of the from is then pipe forwarded into the range function, which filters that data by time. The filter function then filters that data by column value. We then use our custom defined toInt function to receive all the data from filter and convert all the values in that stream of tables to integers. That data is then pipe forwarded into map. The map function is really important because it iterates over all the rows in the input table and either rewrites or updates each individual row. In this specific case, we're, we're using our custom add function to redefine the values in the value column. It takes the existing value in the value column and adds five to that and returns a stream of tables with that modified value. Okay, well it makes sense why order matters because it looks like so we're reducing the, our, the size of our data set with each specific function here and then we're doing something useful with that specific set. Absolutely, I mean the whole point here is to, to query and modify data and structure it in a way that's useful for you. That makes sense. So speaking of useful for me, what if I have a special bespoke snowflake use case where there is not an existing function in Flux? What do I do then? So with Flux being a functional language, it's designed to be composable, meaning it provides primitive functions that you can chain together to create more complex operations. So for example, let's say you write a Flux script and you're repeating the same operation over and over and over again. Right. To save a few lines of code, you can actually define a custom function for that operation and call the function instead of repeating those lines of code. So just being a little bit more efficient. Well, that sounds really handy. Absolutely. Now, in your case where you might have something specific to your use case, you might be surprised to know that there are other Flux users that could use that. Flux is an open source language, so we welcome any open source contribution to the language. So if you feel like that would provide value to other members of the community, by all means, contribute that function to the Flux standard library. 
Well, that's really great to know. And it seems like this is, you know, creating custom functions is a great way to get that time to awesome that we like to talk about. Absolutely. All right, well, that was really useful. Hopefully it was useful for you as well. And we can't wait to see what you build.